ever look at an art piece and thought I could do that? If yes, congrats, you are probably looking at contemporary art. The funny part is that if you try to do it, you won't probably be able to do it. And even if you are, no one will buy it or even call it art. So what is actually contemporary art? I am Mariana and welcome to my new channel Art Talks. This is my first video so please don't judge me and here I'm going to speak not only about contemporary art but also about the art market. All support is welcome so please don't forget to like, subscribe and of course watch the video until the end. So for the first video I'm going to talk about what is contemporary art. I always get surprised when people tell me that they don't understand contemporary art. After all, contemporary art refers to the art produced from the late 20th century until nowadays. But how we actually define contemporary art? So let's go a bit back in time. The notion of contemporary art dates back to the 1940s when modern art was first defined as a movement. Just like that much avant-garde modern art that had broken with tradition ceased to be contemporary. Historians tend to agree that a significant breaking point occurred in the 1960s and 70s with pop art minimalism and performance that with the help of new media exploded all at the same time. Artists could now use new materials to express themselves and the result of this mix didn't need to be pretty. Among the most stunning features of contemporary art is actually the extensive use of theory, a term frequently used as a talisman to ward off searching questions about artistic intention, reference and meaning. Once contemporary art alludes to the art of today, let's have a look of the major art movements. So this way, you will be able to recognize the artwork as soon as you see it. Abstract Expressionism its the first one, and many people consider Abstract Expressionism modern art. Therefore, this movement was actually a kind of a mini turning point in the transition between modern and contemporary art. Auction houses as Christie's and Sotheby's include Abstract Expressionism works into their contemporary art auctions. The name Abstract Expressionism was first used in connection with Kadinsky abstract paintings of the 1920s. It indicates the movement's interest in breaking with the dominant geometric abstraction descendant from the constructivism and the anti-figurative aesthetic of the European abstract schools. The movement quickly won acceptance and it was the first specifically American movement to achieve international influence and put New York City as the center of the Western art world, a role formerly filled at the time by Paris. Major abstract expressionists include Willem de Kooning, Jackson Pollock, Jean Michel and Franz Klee. Let's now go to Neo-Expressionism, was a label first used in the early 1980s to describe the work of narrative-based expressionist painters. Those artists were working principally in Germany, reacting against the banalities of conceptualism and the impersonality of minimalism. Neo-Expressionists saw a return to the traditional concerns of history painting, representing narratives through the format of easel painting. Lead, leading neo-expressionists include Francesco Clemente, Julian Schnabel and, of course, Jean-Michel Basquiat. Now let's go to pop art. Pop art flourished from the 1950s through the 1970s, primarily in the UK and the USA. It found its imagery and many of its techniques from the realms of advertising, consumer packaging and popular culture. In the first instance, pop art was an attempt to break with conventional notions of art, rejecting the distinction between high and low art that had in no way been challenged by the abstract expressionists. As well as questioning many of the accepted norms of fine art, pop art also explored the nature of representation. Some pop artists seized the change to adopt the techniques of mass production, therefore others perversely choose to imitate them by hand, as we can see on Marvel K Coke bottles. In these pieces, the minimal art content shows them to be connected with minimalism. Leading pop artists include Andy Warhol, Roy Lichtenstein, Kate Herring and Robert Indiana. Concept 
Paul Hart. Just look at this banana. You might have seen it on Twitter, on Instagram, and on the cover of New York Post. This artwork named Comedian was presented at Art Basel in 1920 by Mauricio Catalan. Yes, it is art and yes, people bought it. It actually had free buyers. Reportedly, two editions were sold by 120,000 and the last one by 150,000. The idea behind it, according with the gallerist, was to explore how we assign worth and what kind of objects with value. This work of Mauricio Catalan is actually a great representation of conceptual art. Conceptual art gained currency in the 1960s to describe a variety of new art forms. Here the emphasis is not on the physical presence of the artwork but on its conceptual meaning. In practice, this drew up huge varieties of activities from performance to body art. These works want to explore the conventional limits of art through the use of anti-art practices. Conceptual art is often of truth and interest for the most popular audience and designed to inspire indifference. This intention is that experimenting with unorthodox art forms will turn attention away from questions of representation and imitation. Major conceptual artists include Piero Manzioni, Damien Hirst, Ai Weiwei and of course Mauricio Catalan. Now let's go to installation art. Installation art flourished in the 1970s. An installation, it is a specific artwork created for a gallery or outdoor location. Instead of being simply a neutral backdrop to the exhibition as in traditional hanging, the ensemble of elements that make up the installation are arranged so as to interact with the place chosen. This medium wants to provide the beholder with the sensation of physically entering an art space. Pressioners of this genre include Christian Boltanski, Hans Ack and Donald Limsky. Now let's go to minimalism, one of my favorites actually. It's a movement that rose to prominence in the 1960s, practically as a reaction against the gestural painting of the abstract expressionists. More common in sculpture than painting, minimalism employed elemental geometrical shapes. In the 1960s, minimalism issued representation and narrative in favor of representing in its first instance itself. Unlike the techniques of the abstract expressionists, minimalism artists embraced the impersonality of industrial production as main form. In painting, minimalism is characterized by rejecting of gestural painting and an emphasis on abstraction. The apparent simplicity of minimalism art hides the complexity of its intellectual structure. While the work makes a bit of minimal art content, minimalism challenges the beholder to experience a layered and complex aesthetic response. In this way, a work of art with minimal content demands of the beholder a maximal response. Minimalism is often seen as difficult and intractable movement. Practitioners of this place, this genre, include Robert Ryman, Donald Jude and Frank Stell. Realism, also known as hyperrealism and superrealism, was a movement that flourished in the 1970s, especially in the USA. Photorealist artists working large format in acrylics made paintings that resemble photographs, especially of the snapshot kind. They employ techniques that imitate the effects of amateur photography, such as informal compositions and banal subject matter. Leading exponents of this style include Mar Malcolm Morley, Richard S. and Cho Close. Now, performance art, that's a term to describe the presentation of an event that might include music, poetry and dance. Moreover, painting, sculpture, film and video that can also be included. The contest is usually theatrical in the sense that the performance takes place in front of an audience. Most performance artists will insist that it is not theatre but an event. An event where the action takes place in real time with real content. There was a strong element of performance art in the manifestation of the futurists and dadaists. This social dimension was continued in such early expressions of performance art as the action painting of Yves Klein. Those paintings were created in front of an audience by draking naked woman converted in painting over a canvas. So, in conclusion, performance art is an aspect of conceptual art. 
it embraces the viewer that what matters is not the physical art object but the idea that lies behind it. Practitioners of this genre include Marina Abramovic, Ulai and Yayoi Kusama. So even if contemporary art doesn't have a specific definition, it's easier to understand it visually and it represents the art of today. So here now let's go to some points to resume this video in order to make you understand contemporary art like a pro. Contemporary art refers to the art produced from the late 20th century until nowadays. Every art was once contemporary and the notion of contemporary art dates back to the 1940s but the breaking point occurred in the 1960s and 70s. The meaning behind the contemporary art piece is more important than the technique. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed my video and stay tuned for more contemporary art news. We hope you like it and see you!